Hey everybody, it's CG. So I thought I'd just pop on real quick. I know you guys haven't seen a whole lot of me, and most of you, if you've been on my live streams and stuff you've seen, I've been really down with a bad arthritis flare, and especially if you watch some of the stuff when we're talking about it, it shares that they're live. I need to get that footage. I do have some pictures to show you guys. I've got some, I think we did a couple of little clips, but most of it's pictures because we were just enjoying our time together. But I need to get that put together for you, and I haven't been able to do much of anything. I have been really bad really bad so i thought i would update you i did go to the doctor yesterday uh and went to the clinic the same one that andy goes to and um fortunately i'm just under the cuff where i've qualified for a sliding scale so it wasn't as expensive for me as a little bit more than he does because he has no income but well on the books income so he doesn't have any income my due so my unemployment counted but fortunately i was still under that cuff so it didn't cost me much I was able to handle it anyway, and the prescriptions were also on that sliding scale. So, here's what we know. Obviously, I have RA. We all know that. I've known y'all have known that from the beginning, right? The last flare has been so bad. I've been waking up in tears, waking up crying. I mean, if you can imagine hurting so bad that it takes you 15 minutes just to sit up and get out of your bed, and in the first thing in the morning, and you need to go potty, and you can't because it takes you 15 minutes to get out of bed. And then you got to walk across the camp over there. It's been bad, y'all. It's this is probably one of the worst flares, flares I've ever had. Like before I was even diagnosed, it's debilitating pain. I have not been able to get out of bed much at all since we got back from Ohio. So we made it to the doctor, and um, obviously she is not a rheumatologist. She can't actually treat the RA, but she can help me with the symptoms, and she has. Um, even in my face, I've seen the swelling come down. My hands are starting. You can. Beginning to see my knuckles now, which you couldn't for month, about a month now. The swelling has been just enormous. And um, pinching all the nerves and tightening up all the muscles and it's what's causing all the pain. So what she did do is she gave me a round of steroids. Five days. And then if I need a second round, we'll do that. But we'll do a step down for the second round. Obviously, I have to be very careful and watch what I eat. Watch my blood sugars and that kind of stuff. But, um... It's already making a difference. Like I said, I can... I'm going to have to switch y'all back and forth. And I hope y'all don't mind. Bear with me. My arms are still pretty sore. But like I said, you can start to see my knuckles for the first time ever. And well, not ever, but in a month. So the steroids are starting to reduce the inflammation. She also gave me just a couple of days of muscle relaxers and pain medicine. Just to get for us these first couple of days. Because once we get the inflammation under control, it should make this pain a little bit more manageable for me what I'm used to dealing with. So I do have those and they are absolutely helping. I can even somewhat move my arm now. I couldn't, you know, before it's been just from the elbows. I couldn't, if I needed to touch the top of my head, I had to do this number, you know. And now I can actually reach up here and touch my head, but it still hurts. It hurts to do it and I'm stiff, but it is much better. It has made a huge difference. And let me tell y'all, I don't think sometimes that we realize when you go through something like this or, or a traumatic injury or something like that, I don't think you really realize how much you hurt until you don't, if that makes sense. And if any of you have ever been through a really bad injury or whatever, or you've dealt with something long term and then you finally get relief, just how much you were hurting until you're not hurting. So I am still sore, and but nothing like I was. I'm very stiff. I still have trouble moving around. Walking is still difficult for me because, again, the joints are all inflamed but it is today I've had some relief I was able to even take a nap today and not wake up screaming in pain that was a blessing so we're going to do that um and we'll get to the rest of what we're going to do about RA stuff here in a minute let me get through the other stuff I have a UTI which under the circumstances didn't surprise me and that's just where I'm going to leave it uh, when you have mobility issues and I'm just going to leave it there, but I'm sure you can fill in blanks in your head. It, it, things are hard. Things are difficult. And so I'm not surprised that I have a UTI. So I started on antibiotics for that. We've caught it fairly early. It's not horrible yet. But um, we did catch it early, so the antibiotics should clear that up. Um, my blood pressure was extremely high. My blood pressure was 148 over 122. And even for for most people, that's high. For me, that's really high. I've done a lot of work over the years, you know, watching what I eat and careful what I do to come off all of the blood pressure meds and the diabetes meds and all of that stuff. 
And I was scared that it was all coming back because of some of the problems and the issues I was having with, like, feeling like you really, really got to, your bladder's about to bust, and then you go to potty, and there's not much there. And what I was thinking, that's also some of the symptoms and signs for the diabetes. And, which is what I was thinking, but apparently it's the UTI that's doing that. We know that now. We did test my sugars. Now, fasting, my sugar should be below 130, preferably closer to 100, 110. It was 173, so it's a little high, but not as bad as it could be. We also did an A1C, and if you're not familiar with that, an A1C is just a blood test, and it tells you what your sugar average has been over the last three months. Now, a healthy person without diabetes who, you know, it's a normal diet, is around a 6, and it's not unusual for a diabetic to be a 7, which is where I am, 7.2, but that's without medication. I've never gotten that before, you know, until I had meds. And then I was able to come off of them because I had lost so much weight. And I know those of you that are new that look at me, I'm still a big girl, but I was much bigger. I started this journey at 365 pounds. And when I went to the doctor yesterday, I'm at 250. So you guys, that's 115 pounds that I lost. And it made a huge difference. I was able to come off all the blood pressure meds, able to come off all of the diabetes, diabetes medicine. Stopping smoking helped with all of that. So... It's been a while since I had to think about being back on meds. So what we're, what she wants, my diabetes, I'm not worried about. She said most likely it's just your system's out of whack. I know I've eaten a few things that I shouldn't have been eating lately, and most of that was stress. But it's not out of control, so we won't worry about that. The blood pressure, I have had to order a blood pressure monitor. I know I could have gone to Walmart and get one, but the ones at Walmart are for standard arms. I don't have standard arms. I have big, I have wings, okay? I have large arms and with my wings from all the weight I had lost but so I had to order one from Amazon with the extra large cuff it will be here tomorrow um, it's a nice digital auto blood pressure thing you know I mean I scraped up 50 bucks and <laughs> was able to get it which but you know I can't put a price on my, my health if it's something I can do something I need to do so it, it's automatic though you just put the cuff on and push a button it's all digital it inflates itself and reads your takes your readings it does everything for you and I'm going to monitor this particular one will uh, save up to 90 uh, test results so that I can take that back to her at the, at the end of the week or whenever we reschedule this. And uh, she can actually look at herself. If she's thinking because my my pulse was perfect, it was 99, which is what, you know, is perfect. So she's thinking, you know, my lungs sounded real good. My um, heart sounds good. She didn't hear any bowel sound. She didn't hear any negative there anywhere inside. So putting all of this together and the pain is a huge trigger for high blood pressure. Pain is a big one. And she had seen how I was struggling just to get from the truck into her office, you know. So she's pretty sure that the blood pressure issues are due to um, all of this stuff that's going on. And that's what we're hoping. So I'm going to monitor it. We'll keep a close eye on it. I have to take my blood pressure like three times a day. And we'll monitor it. If I need to go back on meds for that, I will. But we're hoping and think, or she's thinking and hoping that, or I'm hoping she's right in her thinking. Let me get this straight. That it's just everything that's going on. So that part of it was okay. We got that. I did get some antibiotics. Like I said, some, just a couple days of pain meds and muscle relaxers. I don't want to be on that stuff a long time. I don't like taking all that stuff, but I knew I needed some relief. So it's two, maybe three days worth of meds. That's it. And then a um, prednisone, which is the steroid, which is faking out the inflammation. So in addition to that, because I qualify for the sliding scale, I would, I would also qualify under the financial aid system through the West Tennessee healthcare system that Andy goes through. It's not state run. It's accounting thing, West Tennessee healthcare. But I will qualify for that, and I can. So she's done a referral to a rheumatologist. That's still going to be pricey, you know. Even with qualifying for the aid, I have to come up with seventy-five dollars for the first office visit, and everything else gets billed. Every time I go, there's a seventy-five dollar office visit, and then anything extra, tests or labs or anything like that, I'll have to just pay. But they will let me make payments on them, and as long as I make regular payments, so it's still going to be pricey. But again. If I can do it, I'm going to do it because I can't go like this. I can't live this way. You know what I mean? So I have the downside to that is because you're going through the this this healthcare system, 
there are very few rheumatologists in, in Jackson. There's only a handful of them, and they are all swamped. I ran into the same thing. If those of you have been with me for a while, when I first got to Memphis, you'll remember I ran into the same thing. There's only one in Memphis and one outside of Memphis. And, I mean, it was very hard. I think it took me three, four months to get an appointment. They're booked that far out. This is no different. And she said, but with all of these, with the referral systems, it usually takes three to four months because you got to get all the referrals done and all that. And then, um, but being that it's the rheumatologist who there's very few of in this town, it could take four to six months. So it'll be a little bit before I can get there, but she did say that she will work with me if we need to continue steroids. You know, it's a low dose. They're all, I'm only taking 20 megs. I'm not taking big high doses. So if we need to continue them for a little while to get me through this, she's willing to do that. And we'll just have to monitor it closely and hopefully get me to where I can function again. You know, and that's going to be huge. So that's kind of where we're at. If y'all would, the only thing I would ask is y'all just keep me in your prayers. And and I know there's a lot of us going through a lot of things and I understand that. I don't, you know, I don't want to take away from that because there are some people that are going through so much worse than I am. And I absolutely don't want to take away from that. But I would ask that you would just keep me in your prayers and hopefully this will get me through until I can be seen and get back on my RA meds, which greatly increase my way of living, so to speak. So anyway... I just wanted to pop on and let y'all know, and some of the people that I've already talked to have been just so supportive and so loving, and I can't say thank you enough. I just can't. So, and y'all know who you are, but other than that, I'm doing okay. Um, being out of pain has mentally helped a lot. You know, I was really getting into some depression and hopelessness and feeling helpless and I told myself I wasn't going to cry, y'all. I was just feeling useless and helpless. Like I am the one that takes care of everybody else. Nobody's supposed to take care of me, you know? And, uh, it's been a tough, tough month for me, but, and it was starting to catch up, but all I can tell y'all just one day of what I call normal pain, which is what I'm used to dealing with all my life. I'm used to this level of pain. One day of that away from all this excruciating stuff has made such a difference. It just has made a huge difference. I feel lifted. I feel like I don't have that burden. Like there's hope again that I, I'm going to be okay. And I, that is huge. I can't tell y'all how much that means. So anyway, if y'all just keep me in your prayers and all of the love and everything that y'all send me, it, it means the most to me. It does. So I wanted to thank everybody and give you a quick update and hopefully here soon I can get back to making some videos for y'all. So until then, bye guys. Love ya.